You know, when you embark upon doing algebraic work, it turns out, turns out that behind the scenes, actually, we have got a huge number of workhorses working behind the scenes, allowing us to do a lot of the things that we do. And, and they're sort of invisible in the sense that we just all take them for granted. And so I thought it'd be fun just for you and I to talk a little teeny bit about those workhorses, the invisible workhorses of algebra. And, and you know them, you love them, you use them all the time, but it's sort of worth, worth recording. Anyway, we have these two identity properties. Namely, if you take any number and add it to zero, you get the any number back. We say that zero is the additive identity element. Similarly, with respect to multiplication, if you take any number and multiply it by one, you get the any number back. Here we say one is the multiplicative identity element. And there's all, all kinds of examples that you can think about if you wanted to. I'll just do a couple just for fun. For example, if you take negative four and add zero, notice that we get negative four. Similarly, if you take another number, let's take three halves and multiply it by one, well, technically, that's actually 1 with an invisible 1 there. And 3 times 1 is 3. 2 times 1 is 2. And we get back our 3 halves. And so you can see, in fact, 1 is the multiplicative identity. 0 is the additive identity. Just basically, if you add 0 or add one, uh, multiply by 1, we get the same answer. This is going to be really important when we're solving algebraic equations. So this is not just for the frivolous at heart. Then there are these inverse properties. If you, if you take a, a number a and add to it negative a, then it produces 0. Negative a, we say, is the additive inverse to a. Similarly, if we take an a, and here, by the way, it's very important that a is not 0. We've already talked about the fact that a can't be 0 because we can't divide by 0. Then if we multiply it by the reciprocal 1 over a, then we get 1, which I remind you is the multiplicative identity. So let's take a look at some examples of, of these things coming into play. What we see here is if we take a number like 3 and we add to it negative 3, we produce 0. Let's try another example. Let's try the number negative 5 plus negative negative 5. Now notice that does follow the form of this. I have a number and I add negative that number. Well, what happens here? Well, this actually requires a teeny bit of work. I've got negative 5 plus, and a negative times a negative we know is a positive. So this is actually just plus 5. And there, we're relieved to again see 0. So it confirms this identity yet again. Now, in terms of this multiplicative thing, let's just take 2. And notice that if I multiply it by the reciprocal, this is called the reciprocal, this is the, the flip of 2. It's called the reciprocal, 1 over 2. Notice that there I have a 2 on the top and a 2 on the bottom. You can imagine the invisible 1 there if you want. Actually, let me write that out so you can see it. I don't want you to be confused by that. Here's 2 with the invisible 1 but made much more visible. And now you can see that the 2's cancel, and I'm just left with, again, 1. One more example, maybe a little sneaky one. Let's look at 3 fourths. If I take 3 fourths and multiply it by 1 over 3 fourths, then we see these guys cancel, and I'm left with 1. But what is 1 over 3 fourths? Remember the rule? We're dividing 1 by 3 fourths, so we invert whoop, and multiply. So really, this is the expression 3 fourths times 4 thirds. Because notice, I've taken that division and flipped and multiplied. Notice that the 3's cancel and the 4's cancel. And indeed, I confirmed the identity again. I get 1. So in fact, here is the way of finding the multiplicative inverse, or the reciprocal, and the additive inverse, which is the negative. So again, very standard, and the, reason, and the way, reason why we need this is because we'll have equations or identities, and we'll want to do stuff to both sides, and what we see is we can subtract a from both sides, and if we did that, then if there was an a on one side, it would cancel away. If I take an a on one side and I divide both sides by a, I'd be left with 1. So these properties allow us to simplify things, and in particular, simplify the algebra equations that we might look at.
Okay, so let me just show you some other ones really fast. These are ones, again, that you're familiar with, and we'll just take these for granted. These really are the invisible workhorses. This one is just the commutative properties of addition and multiplication. That's just a very fancy way of saying, if you take A and add it to B, it's the same thing as taking B and adding it to A. 2 plus 3 is the same as 3 plus 2. It makes no difference. Similarly, with multiplication, A times B is the same as B times A. So you can multiply either A times B, 2 times 3, or 3 times 2. In both cases, you get 6. Again, very uh, believable standard. Now, this property is called the associative property. And what it basically means is, if we take a look at the first example, if you want to add three numbers together, you can first either group them this way. Remember, the order of operations is to first do the parentheses. So you can first either add those two numbers together and then add the last one. Or if you wanted to, you could add the last two numbers and then add the first one. Either way will produce the same answer. We say that addition is associative. Let me just illustrate this with an example. Suppose that I have 2 plus 3 plus 7. Notice that this way, I first do the parentheses and I get 5 plus 7, and that equals 12. On the other hand, if I were to group the other way, 2 plus the quantity 3 plus 7, then first I have to actually do that addition and get 10, and then combine with the 2, but notice I get the same answer, 12. So it doesn't make a difference which pair you add first. And similarly with multiplication. If you have three numbers that you're multiplying together, you can either multiply the first two and then take that product and multiply by the last, or you can take the last two, take their product, and multiply by the first. doesn't make a difference what, what way you do it. And we call that property associative. And then finally, this is maybe one of the most important properties that we'll use a lot in algebra, which is the distributive property. The distributive property says that if, in fact, you have this quantity, b plus c, and you multiply the whole thing by a, it's the same thing as taking the a times the b, the a times the c, and adding up. Remember the, the orders of operations, we first do the multiplication here, we first do the multiplication here, and then we do finally adding. Let me just illustrate this with a quick example. Suppose I take 2 times 3 plus 5. Well, if we work that out, we first do the things inside the parentheses, and we see 2 times 8, which is 16. On the other hand, the distributive property says it should be the same thing as 2 times 3 plus 2 times 5. Notice that in this case, 2 times 3 is 6 plus, and then 2 times 5 is 10, and that again yields the number 16. So we get the same answer. You can think of the distributive property as sort of distributing that 2. Take that 2, and we're going to share it. We're going to distribute it to the 3, so there it is, and then we add what we get when we distribute it to the 5. And so you can see the 2 hitting the 3, and then the 2 hitting the 5. We take those results and add it together. That's what the distributive property means. Again, really, really important one. We always follow the parentheses, but this tells us that we can sort of have the A jump the parentheses, but it has to hit both terms, this, but then also here, the distributive property. These are the workhorses of algebra, and we'll use them all the time in solving all sorts of algebraic excitement. I'll see you at the next lecture.